upload their blogs and their vlogs. Okay. Um, thank you guys all for coming. Um, just kind of wanted to reiterate, because I know I've gotten several emails and comments on WhatsApp, you know, um, just in terms of the expectations for the fellowship that everyone is producing um, at, at the minimum two blogs or vlogs each month. Um, I have noticed that people are starting to upload some of their um, ideas to the HPHR spreadsheet that Elizana put together. So thank you, Elizana. Um, I did notice some people had some dates where they said that they would publish one thing in June and one thing, one thing in May and one thing in June. And I just want to let everybody know that the expectation is that you would have two things for May, two things for June, et cetera, et cetera. So just kind of wanted to flag that because I, I think that may not have been understood by everyone. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, I think I will just say to, um, there was an email that said that there are 15 of you or 13 who've been, um, you know, who are going to be working with myself and there are 13 who are working with Cersei. So feel free to reach out to us for like any particular questions. And the few people who are on my team who have reached out, um, really enjoyed your blogs. Um, and as I said, I think I've already like given people the yes. So for those people who um, are here, I think Ellen, you're one of them and I'm trying to see if anyone else, um, I already gave you the clear to go ahead with yours. So like today, as soon as you learn how to do it, like if you want to upload your blog, I, I have already approved it. So you're good to go with that. Um, I think that was all that I have for right now, Cersei. Um, I'll do the scholastic a bit after you do the website. Okay, okay. So um, I'm going to be sharing my screen now. We are recording, so this is going to be available. Um, hopefully as soon as we're done, I can get it downloaded and onto our training section of YouTube. And um, we'll be looking at YouTube a little bit today. So I'm going to first share our, my screen, our screen. I'm gonna share my screen. And of course I have 14 million tabs open because why wouldn't I? <laughs> That's me. Um, so as everyone knows, this is Big Red. Big Red is still monopolizing the harvardpublichealthreview.org domain. Um, and as you know, if you type in hbhr.org, it also goes to the website. Um, that will not be for long. By the 1st of June, we're going to be on our new website. Now, I've sent out to everyone um, a link, username and password. Um, the username and password should have come in to everybody, all the fellows today, um, through a separate email. If you did not get it, please check your spam. Sometimes it goes to spam. Also, um, if you still don't get it, please let me know because I want to get the site triggered so that you have your username and password. Um, also, I sent out a worksheet that has all of the information I'm going to be discussing, um, sort of condensed. It's about six pages long, so it's obviously a lot of information. Um, that should be your cheat sheet, your go-to, um, and really like um, something that you refer to as you get up and up to speed, if you will, with this whole process. Um, I understand that this is a lot of information, but um, it'll hopefully come together pretty soon. So let me just, oh, what is that? I'm sorry, the site, this sometimes Zoom makes my computer go very slow and also do some strange things. Okay. So right now the website is living at this domain. It's called camailserver.com. It's live and online. However, please don't share links from this website. It is very much under um, construction at the moment. I'm trying to move it to the home page so you can see it. When you go to the home page, you'll see the our hero image at the top. And if you scroll down, you'll see oh, you'll see the first of our 
featured HP HR author insight of the week videos. This is Anna Bergersky, one of our um, authors who's appearing in edition 28. But as you scroll down, you can see that it is um, not populated just yet. And that is by design. Um, this will probably be the last page to be fully um, ready to go online. Your business um, is going to be primarily, obviously, on this page. This is the fellows page. You will not be doing anything with this page per se, but um, once I'm done populating it, um, right now it, it's using the same, it's pulling the same picture. Um, that's why everybody looks the same at the moment. Um, your blog will be accessible from this page. And when folks click on it, they're going to be able to see all of your blogs and the information about you. And it will look like this. So this is an example. This is Hana Nasri. And at the top, you have um, just a banner that shows your name and your association. It has the name of your blog and then some information. And as you can see, this blog is associated with um, Dr. Nasri right now, and it's um, showing up at the bottom. And as she has more blogs, they'll start appearing in this section as well. I also, I'm sorry? Do you mind if I jump in quickly? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Go back up. Um, so I, I, I'm assuming some of this is just you know, so like, for instance, like Hannah, who's on the call right now, um, that's not her university. That's not the name of her blog. Is that just something that was pulled together? Like by the, I don't know. I'm just curious. Oh, no, um, I just, I have to go in and fix this. This is, this is like not anything anyone's going to do with. I'm creating these pages for everybody. And um, I don't know how that green line came up, but um, this is, this is just an example <laughs> to like okay. sort of show what it's going to look like. Okay, just, um, just was it sure? Cause I, yeah, <laughs> this is not her blog either. I'm trying, I was experimenting to see how it would work. This is a taxonomy on the back end. And um, when I use tags, this is tagged with her name at the moment and it pops it up so that it's right here. Um, at the bottom on everyone's page will be um, stay connected. And this is actually like a template page that I've been working with. And so your name will be your name on the final version of everyone's pages. And you'll have the option of um, adding in your social media. Not everybody has all of these um, six platforms but I'll work very hard to make sure that everyone's is populated with this and um, you'll be checking your page for any errors and um, we'll update it accordingly. So the most important thing that you'll be using as we move forward, does everyone see this green line? Like there's like a green mark right here. Do you see that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. That's very odd. Um, I'm sorry about that. I don't, I don't know what that is. So this is an actual, this is the blog template. This is what everyone's going to be using at, from this day forward to upload their content, okay? On the back end, it looks like this. This is what it looks like when you bring it up at the moment. It's obviously like a template. Um, and as you see here, I have it at the size, the title of your blog should be, it's going to have your name and your title, and then has the option for having text to swap out the text. You're going to click in this box here and over to the left, you know, you can start typing away and you'll also be able to cut and paste. This is an optional um, 
quote or pull quote here. Now you'll need to go in, never try to change any of the text in these boxes over here. It's very attractive and everybody wants to do it. Don't, don't do it, it'll make things quite awkward. You'll want to come over to the left and always change text here. Um, so this is an optional pull quote. If you do not want it, you do not need to keep it. What you're going to do is look over here to the right and you see this navigator. You can always get back to the top. There it is, your hero message. It brings you down to the next section. And then the next section here, you can see when I click on it, it's corresponding. But let's say you don't want this pull quote. You're going to go over into your navigator. You're going to right click and you're going to delete it. And then suddenly you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, let's say you wanted that and you um, inadvertently erased it. You can just hit um, control on PC and um, butterfly on Mac and just um, bring it back. There you go. And that'll undo that issue. I've added it another text box here. Is, you know, obviously, because you'll probably want to continue your blog. And then toward the bottom, I have added in a number of um, assets that you might want to that you might want to add in. Now, some folks are gonna be doing podcasts and what you're gonna to wanna to do is add them in on SoundCloud and then you will pull them in using this tool. This is a SoundCloud tool that allows you to upload and add in the link to your um, podcast. You can see over here, you're going to get the link to your SoundCloud um, file and you're gonna add it in there. I've already set this up. Um, there are autoplay, you don't want things to autoplay, that's quite annoying. <laughs> um, and also I got rid of like issues with wanting to sell your um, SoundCloud recording and the like, you don't want those defaults. This is a video. Um, a, a video holding place. Now let's say, um, let me just jump back up. Let's say you don't want this. You're like, I'm not doing any podcasts. Why does Cersei have this in here? You're gonna go up here and you can actually just click here and get rid of it. Or you can go back to your navigator and get rid of it there just by right clicking as I demonstrated up above. Here for your video, you'll notice that when I clicked on it, there was no image there. It was just kind of a blank box. And that's one of the strange things about um, this particular um, tool on um, the back end here. What I'm gonna want you to do is go over here. First, you're gonna um, add your YouTube URL. And then you're going to go to overlay and you're going to add in a picture. And you can add in any picture, you know, you can add in a little, little cat. <laughs> and then um, the, you'll have a picture for your, um, for your video. I'm not going to save this, by the way, so the, the templates won't have like cats or anything in them. I added in this image here. Um, I'm not saying that you should have some huge hero image of the um, logo. This is for you to have a space where you can add in pictures. You would just go, you would just click on this box. And then let's say you wanted to add in a photo. You could go over here and upload your photo. I don't know if Naomi's on here, but I pick on her a little bit, I guess. <laughs> um, and then you can just insert a photo and then you can also resize this photo as well. 
So right now yeah, I've made it a thumbnail size. This is medium, medium, large, and, and so on up the scale. You can also do custom sizes. However, I, I tend to like um, put, you know, I wouldn't do that because unless you're very accustomed or comfortable with um, doing custom sizes, you can inadvertently make things very wonky with your picture or, or cause it to be pixelated. So using the pre-existing um, sizes is normally the way to go. This is an interesting tool. It is a carousel. Um, you can, if you go up here right now, it has like a little um, office scene on the back end here. It has two pictures. You can change the order of them. You can also um, go in and add more photos if you would like. So um, this is an option for you. It might be attractive if you um, have a number of photos that you want to share, but you don't want to create, you know, sort of a chaotic scene and you just um, would like to have a, some sliding action on your page. Um, and so that's an option as well. There is a possibility of doing um, video with carousel, um, with a, a carousel sort of function. If you would like to do that, let me know and we can work on that together. Um, that's a little bit, that can start getting a little more complicated. After all of these assets, um, I dare say I cannot imagine someone having a blog with all of these assets in there, but um, whatever you have, once you're done, you can finish up with some text or you can get rid of it just by clicking up here or right clicking on the right. Again, um, social media icons. And the idea here is, is you'll probably have to complete these one time for your very first blog. And then for subsequent blogs, I'm going to show you a little trick. You're going to replicate your blog on the back end, and then you can just, um, you won't have to reinvent the wheel. You'll just be updating the content of your blogs as you move forward um, through the fellowship. So let me just show you very quickly how to work with your social media icons on the website. Um, if you have any questions while I'm talking, please say something. Um, I, I cannot see the little hands very well that go up. Um, I just, because of just my glasses and my small screen. So, um, so I'm sorry. Thank you, Cersei. Um, Elizana did have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, and Elizana, I was trying to understand what you meant. Um, so the question was like whether or not there would be a media kit in terms of the HPHR logos that they yeah. could use. And so what I was trying to understand is if people were, if people would want to insert them in the blog, which to me, like we already have the logos at the top of the website or at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you would need to do that. And I'm, I'm not sure what other reason you, uh, might want to have the logo. Um, so I, oops, sorry. Ahead. I'm so sorry. No, 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 you're fine. Uh, so most media toolkits that I'm familiar with include specifications for the logo, but they also include like font formats uh, and styles that are appropriate mm -hmm. for people to use uh, with the organization. Like if there's a certain font style that's used for the heading versus the body of a text. Uh, it also includes the specific colors that are used. So yes. um, there are certain organizations that have like color trademarks. And so to make sure that things are uniform across different platforms that can sometimes be specified in a media toolkit. So I was just thinking if on our other social media platforms, like if I were to use Canva and create something for an Instagram post and be like blog coming soon, uh, just to create content in between Mm -hmm. official blog or blog post, um, I thought it might be helpful to have that information. Of course, and that's an excellent question. And um, it's quite spot on. In the document that I sent out to everyone via email, I provide a link to um, our Google Drive 
where our logos live. And I give you a direct link to that. Um, all of the logos are in there. And I also provide all the hex codes for our colors. And I provide a bit of an overview of the colors that we have been privileging. This is a new, um, is a new branding for us. It's quite updated. And I have found in working with this new color scheme that the blue um, followed by the red worked best. And um, I provide some notes about um, that we are privileging the blue. It's a little different with the fellows program because we have um, branded it with a slightly, with the variation of this logo, which is um, yellow and black as opposed to um, the red and blue. It has the red in it as well. So, um, so I, that's a really great question. I'm also going to show you something about the back end of the website that helps control color schemes. Um, I do provide the hex codes for black and white because obviously you will want to use um, knockout text when you're writing over the darker areas um, of like in this area, for instance, and this is um, K over O in this, um, the text here, and I provide the hex code for this text color. So that's an excellent question. Um, on the website, in terms of branding with the logos, it's not as much of an issue as Candace was saying. Obviously, the logo is everywhere. Um, so it'd be kind of a little overkill if you like put the logo in. Um, I wouldn't say it was, you know, verboten, but um, you, you know, I, you, it's not, um, you're not obliged to do it because it's, it's already there. So let me show you one thing. Let's say in, and this goes to your question, Alison. Let's say you are typing away on your brand new blog and you can say, you can just see, I tried to do that little thing where I was gonna type over here and I moved it over to the left because it's not gonna like it. So um, I'm typing my blog. I want to emphasize this text. What I'm gonna do is, this is in paragraph, right? And I have already dictated what's gonna be a heading, what's going to be um, paragraph text um, and the like. So this is already laid out. If you want to change something with it, let me know and we can certainly work something out. That's, that's not a problem. But for now, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna, I wanna um, emphasize this text, but it looks a little bland because it's gray you know, a grayish dark color. I want this to be one of our global colors. So we're in the content section right now that allows you to like mold all the text to what you want it to be and what you want it to say. But if you would like it to change colors, you're going to go over here. Now, if you click here, you can see down, there's the hex code. I don't wanna do that. If you're going to be changing colors in here, you're gonna to want to go to the left and you want to grab our colors. You can see that these correspond to the logo colors. And these have already been set up on the back end as global, as global um, branding. So if you do that, suddenly you have, um, you're, you've really emphasized your text. <laughs> and you can also change it back. And um, this is more of an advanced um, section. If you are very savvy with website design and the like, this um, platform is called Elementor. It's quite easy to use. And um, you can do things like add motion effects, you can add parallax scrolling and the like. Um, if you are newer to it, 
just don't go over to the advanced section. But let's say you did want to add in a heading. I don't have that in this blog section right now, right? I don't have it in the template, but you want a heading. You're going to go up here and you're going to search for heading. It's right here at the top. It's a very common one for people to use. You're going to grab it and you're going to drag it where you want it to be. You're going to let it go. And because I'm on Zoom, it's going to think about it for three hours. There we go. You can see that this heading is defaulting to one of our global colors already. But let's say you don't want it to be that global color. You want it to be the red. You've changed it. You can go back over. And then you have your heading. Now, one of the weird vagaries of website pages, in order to increase our findability, if you will, which is the search engine optimization, and I'm not going to go into that too much. Every page has to have a heading that is H1 in size. I already have that at the top. If you add in two headings that are H1 in size, Google will start freaking out and will think that you're trying to pull something over on the search algorithms. So. That's why this one is H2. So please, when you're designing your blogs, don't add in a bunch of headings that are H1. It'll look insane and um, will cause things to go crazy. So that is a lot of what needs to happen with setting up your, um, your blogs. So let's say you're done and um, you're like, this is it. I've, I've got a whole bunch of stuff on here. When you are done, you are going to hit publish. And it's going to think about it for a minute. And then you can have a look at it. Cersei, can I, I feel like so annoying jumping in all the time. No, no, um, no. So I, sorry, I, I actually stepped away for a second. So I apologize if you mentioned this. Um, where does the part come in where they check in with us on the blog? Like, do they go ahead and publish this? We look at it and then we make it visible? That is a good question. Um, I'm going to go into the next phase of what folks have to do with their blog. So and um, we'll is and I'll and I'll talk about what needs to happen at that point um, in terms of checking in with us. So once you have your blog like all laid out, and you can do this next step first, but um, we're doing it second here. You're going to hit edit post as opposed to edit in Elementor. Elementor is like a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Editing phenom, if you will. It makes it very easy to lay out pages, get content on there. This is more of the um, things that you have to do in order to um, make the page sort of go, if you will. Um, and also make it so that I can pull your blog and have it appear on your, your personal homepage within the website, okay? Now, this is gonna be a little more hairy, so bear with me, okay? Once you are here on the back end, now, you'll see that this is a template and you're going to want to change the name of this page. Now, this name is not visible 
the way the site is laid out. However, you know, the site needs to have it's um, it basically works as kind of like a database. So you need to name it so it can find it. I duplicated this. That's why it says duplicated. You're going to add in your name. So since I'm not a fellow, I don't, I don't want to confuse anyone. So I'm just going to add my name in here. Or actually, we'll just have it be the Admirals. It's my cat. He's a very smart boy. This is my um, first blog, or it's his first blog. And I've labeled it fellow blog. That's just the name of it. But don't put the things on there. If you ever see any of these um, weird numbers that show up after it, just erase that. We're going to go over to the right. You see here where it says public, we're gonna click on that and you're gonna make it private, okay? And you're gonna click okay. Just gonna think about it for a moment. Don't hit password protected that or anything like that, that that'll, can get a little weird. Don't click on stick to the top because that is a little weird too. You'll see your name here. And in fact, if you scroll through, you can see all kinds of people's, um, these are every, all the users of the website right now. Um, you probably saw your own name. You can see that there were nine revisions as we were going through. You are going to change the slug, okay? The slug refers to um, like hbhr.org slash name of your blog, okay? You can see right now, if we don't fix this, look at the name of, that's gonna come up in the URL of this um, post. And we do not want that, that that's insane looking. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go over here you're gonna copy and paste it. And suddenly it makes sense. It's the, this is the, um, your name. It's the first blog and then name of blog. If you have a really long blog name, just grab one or two words from it. Otherwise, it's gonna look nuts, you know, don't, don't do that. You can then see what the um, URL will look like. Then you're gonna come down to categories, okay? I've already set these up for everybody. You are going to select fellows if that's not already selected. You are then going to select your name. Obviously the Admiral, did not get selected as a fellow, so he's not on this list. We'll just pretend that this is his name. And I, you need to scroll all the way down to the bottom to make sure that uncategorized is not selected, because that's very annoying. You were then going to make sure that all of the tags that you want are listed in here. And you are going to put in three mandatory tags that I need and the website needs actually in order for us to pull the content onto your homepage on the back end. Okay. So these are the set tags for everybody. And you see here where it says topic, you're going to get rid of that. And then you're going to put in like, let's say this blog was about, um, well, it's the Admiral of Cat. So it's about cats. You're going to type in the word cat and you're going to hit return. And then you're going to, once you put in everything, you know, for um, cat bites, you notice that I was able to make a keyword with two words and then hit return. Then you're going to enter in your name. So the name of the cat is the Admiral, no, 
you're going to hit return. Excuse me, just one moment. It's very loud, thank you. So, um, and then you have the Admiral's name all together and then you have a first name and then you have this, his last name. So this allows me on different parts of the site to pull in your blog as needed by keyword, um, including parts of your name as needed, okay? You are then gonna scroll down, continuing on. There's already a featured image here. Now, because this is for your blog and not for your homepage, I wouldn't have your, your picture be here. I would have like a screenshot of your YouTube video if you are um, showing that, maybe a YouTube uh, or a screenshot of your SoundCloud, uh, maybe an image related to your blog, and then you would add it in here. And to do that, of course, you would just click on it, go to upload your pictures, and then um, add it in. And pardon me if like I'm using your picture in like a weird way. I, I, I was just doing some, I've been doing some work on the site. You were then, as you scroll down, like you have your picture in there, you were then going to, you have the option of writing a little bit of text that'll show up as an excerpt um, underneath your blog. Now, when it's pulled into different places, whether it's your personal homepage or on another part of the site, like the, like the um, homepage of the website as a whole, because there's gonna be a section that says, recent fellows blogs and it's going to be pulling the very recent ones so it'll have like the name of the blog the little image and like some text from your blog it'll pull this if you add something here if you leave it blank it's just going to pull the first 10 or words so from your blog itself you're going to scroll down a lot of times these two um, tick boxes are automatically selected. Please turn them off. If you see them like this, done. Just get rid of them because that's, you don't want, when you allow comments in on your page and stuff, it can get a little, can get a little weird. Um, also, final thing, this is already set but sometimes you'll see it saying it's on a default template or it's on a theme. You want it to be on Elementor full width, okay? So as I said, it's a lot of information, but it's something that's going to become very natural as you um, do more and more of these, okay? Now, probably you're wondering when I'm done with all this, how can I find my blog if I wanna make an update to it? Or if I want to add a new blog and I've been told I don't need to reinvent the wheel, I can just replicate what I did before. To do that, you're gonna log in. And a lot of times when you log in, you'll be taken straight to the back end which looks like this. This is the dashboard, okay? Now, when you're logged in, just really quickly, you see this bar up here? This shows that you were logged in. If you need to get to the back end, you just go over here and you go straight down to the dashboard. You can go in and do things with the themes and the menus. Please don't. <laughs> so you're not gonna go and do anything with the pages. You are working in posts, okay? Posts are like 
very dynamic pieces of the website that um, different aspects um, and portals can query and bring to the forefront and display. That was a very weird explanation, but um, fairly accurate. So if you wanna see all of the posts, you're just going to click on it. And lo and behold, here is our post that we just created. Um, if you hit quick edit, you can see all of the information that we worked on, right? Here we have all of our hashtags that we created. So here's his first name, his last name, and then his whole name. Here's all of the um, different hashtags that we've created. One of the odd things it does is that it will make them alphabetical order after you save. And um, if you do make any changes, you would just hit update. It's not making it live or anything. You can see it's still private. Please do not add a password onto it. And then you can hit update. If you click on edit, it's going to take you back to that editing um, schema that we were looking at before. That's a very old fashioned original way of editing on WordPress called blocks. If you want to edit with the full sort of WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, you would click on this. But best yet, you can duplicate this. So let's say you're ready to do the Admiral number two, name a blog. You just hit duplicate and you are ready to go. You can hit quick edit get rid of that duplicated signature. I've triggered um, Siri. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Great. Cersei, um, so, so this is obviously my uh, first time doing this whole process. Um, the way you're doing it now. And so basically what you're showing is like, you know, for the fellow who's posting blog two, um, mm -hmm. they basically are just using that PA duplicate. Um, and it's very yeah. simple. It sounds like after they do the first blog, like the first blog is gonna require them to do all the tags and everything. But as mm -hmm. long as they continue to hit PA duplicate, they can do every single blog like that afterwards, never have yeah. to redo their tags or anything. Yes, yes. I mean, they probably will wanna redo the tags a little bit based on the topic. You yeah. know, like, cause let's say you, you talk about human trafficking in one blog and then the next blog, it's about cats. Um, you probably want to get rid of the human trafficking tags and then replace them with um, like fur and cats. <laughs> I, that was a very strange example, but um, you know, I just wanted to make it as different as possible. So, but yes, this is, Hopefully you'll see like after all of the sort of heavy lift of your first blog, you'll, you'll be um, good to go for the next ones. Um, if, so can I ask a quick question? Please. Um, will there be like a template that has all of these like extra things that you've shown us like with the SoundCloud and the photos and the, mm -hmm. all the thing? Because um, I'm imagining that we might not need it for our first one, but maybe later on we use the elements. And that won't duplicate if we duplicate our first post, right? Yes. So okay. let's say, um, so this is our this is our second post, and let's pretend in our first post we didn't need SoundCloud, and we didn't need video. We just needed a picture, and um, and we wanted the carousel. And you're like, oh my gosh, I need. What am I going to do? I need I need to put in a video. So. You can see it's right here, but here you go. You can just do a search. There's a couple different video boxes. Um, excuse me. I'm gonna, I tend to veer toward premium video box. There's really no big difference between the two of them other than um, this is just 
the elementor, elementor um, piece that I've been working with. Now, one of the things that I've set up on the back end is sizing all of this is like um, multiple um, boxes that are stacked on top of one another. And I've made them all a thousand PX in size. Um, so here you have, I just added in the video. It is set up to be automatic with this weird little thing about guide dogs. Um, you would just add in your YouTube uh, link here. And then as I showed you before, you're just gonna go in and add in your overlay photo. And we'll and um, then you're ready to go. You know, you have your little um, picture here. Same with SoundCloud. You're just gonna click up here, which brings you to all the little widgets and tools you can use. They call them the elements. And you can hit SoundCloud, it comes right up. Again, you can add it. You will, if you do need to add it again, just be sure that you remove um, things like play counts, the username, um, unless you want that in there. And you certainly don't want to have the buy button. Um, you can also um, make it appear in a slightly different fashion if you like, um, which I think is kind of attractive. You can have an entire image just by selecting visual player on the left. So you can see it's very, very easy to add things in as you need them. Um, you might have some elements that are a bit different. And what I suggest doing is going up here, just clicking, and you'll probably um, find what you need. I'm asking everyone, please do not add in any of these sort of um, portfolio or post or any kind of, um, these are more like query driven elements and these can be a little tricky to use and unless you're very experienced in doing it, I, I recommend against it. Um, you can also add buttons if you like, if you do have for some a need to um, redirect someone to somewhere. Like let's say you are writing a blog about a conference or something and you want to include information about how to um, register for whatever reason. You can see right away that there is a bit of a style issue with this. So you would want to go in and um, fix that. So this is actually a good example. You can see it has this global. We want to get rid of that. And if you look at the document I sent, you would just change that color scheme. And you have a button. And you can um, change the size of it. And if you really would like it to be rounded, I can show you how to um, change some of the padding and the like to round it out. So, Good question. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, say um, someone wanted to add just, just merely an audio component to their blog, as in they wanted to be able to have the written form, but then they wanted to just you know, provide an opportunity for their reader to just download the audio portion that could go through SoundCloud as well. Um, yes, and, and you can download would, it. Yeah. How would it appear like, because here, obviously this is what the, the podcast looks like with the, the face, but would it just appear as like a, like a little audio, I guess. It would appear like this. Um, if you don't have any artwork really associated with it, you would just make it like this. Um, and it would appear in this fashion. Mm -hmm. If you are aver averse to using SoundCloud, we can um, add like an MP3 to the back end of the website. Um, I generally, I'm trying to um, keep people from adding video and um, 
you know, MP3s to the back end of the site itself because that it makes the site um, very large after a while and then it could get a little clunky. And, um, you know, you can see already on the back end, I've, I've had control of the site for about two days and I already have like tons of pages and architecture that I've been building. We have a ton of things in the media center um, so SoundCloud makes things cleaner. So does having all the video on YouTube. So, and I'm going to talk about where to put our, our videos and, and the like um, in the next little segment. But this really shows in a nutshell how to build your posts as well as um, replicate and keep moving forward. Um, as you go through the fellowship. Um, I realized this was a lot. Uh, I, I, please let me um, answer some questions if you have them. Just shout them out at me so I can answer. Um, so I have a question about the previous step, actually. And thank you so much for comprehensively taking us through all of these steps. So once we land at the fellows page, and I'm assuming I'll receive the username and the, I mean, the login credentials, which you mm -hmm. said would be available on the top right corner. I wasn't sure how do we come, you know, from our fellows homepage to be actually creating these posts. Okay. That link in between. Yeah. You, so um, if, I don't know if you have your, the document open. So. Um, yes. So here is your fellows page. And um, oh, I'm I'm so sorry, Hannah. Like your your image, I was using your the thing I was working with, and I replicated it to start creating all of the fellows sort of home pages. So this page, you do not have to worry anything about it. What you cannot see here, if I go on the back end of it. And this is just uh, to be comprehensive. You don't have to worry anything about it. This is um, this is something called um, this is like a post Elementor tool that um, you can't see really on the back end. It is set up right now. You can see it's set up to um, pull five columns. And I'm going to make it able to pull up 30 posts. And, um, and suddenly there's like one different person. Um, once I go through and update everything, it's going to have the picture and the name and the information, just sort of the start of it at the bottom for each of the fellows. I'm creating this, you do not have to worry about it. The one thing I need everybody to do, however, is to make sure that the page, when they click on it and they go and read it, that it's what they want um, and that the information is accurate and hasn't changed, okay? You do not have to worry about anything with this. So, Other, and, and so once I click on my fellow's homepage, suppose, so that's the step I'm trying to ask, like, suppose I click on, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, then, yes, from here, what's the next step in terms of editing or basically creating a new post from here? Okay, you don't do anything with this. Mm -hmm. This is yep. also something that I'll be handling. If right. I, when, you, when I click on it, and it's obviously a little, a little crazy because it has like a couple different people's information on it. It's just like basically a template. And I've moved, I've moved um, Dr. Nasri to California. You um, are all you need to do is click on your page, read it, and make sure it's correct. If you would like to make changes to it, you certainly can, or you can let me know so that I can go in. The reason that I'm being a little more um, controlling of these sections is because of this right here. This is a post or an archive um, element or tool on the back end, and it um, populates through queries. And um, 
I don't know if um, there might be a few folks who were very um, savvy with this type of, um, you know, tool on websites. But uh, if if you are not, I would prefer that folks not go in here. This is obviously not related to anything that Dr. Nazari is doing. I was just um, simply testing um, this piece of it. If you go down here, and again, you don't have to worry about anything with this. I'm just showing you so that you can see it. Um, I created a tag um, I, for different authors. And I actually, this is a tag for um, Naomi Fakunda. Um, and it pulled an article that I tagged with her name because I was testing to see how that would work and it does work very well. So that's why it's so important for all of your articles and blogs, I should say, when you do that metadata or keywords that you include your name in those um, multiple variations, like the three variations that I showed. So again, you do not have to worry about this. In order to um, add the uh, blogs, for you and what you're going to be working with, you are going to go into the dashboard. You're going to go to posts. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to um, have the template. And I think what's going to be best is if for the first one, I, may, I put a name so, um, so for like Rand Randevin here, Randevin Pierre, number one, name of blog, and then Randevin can just go in and start working with that template, set it up the way he wants, and then he can start replicating it. And I'll do that for each of you. Does that sound like a good plan? Thank you. That would be very helpful. Yes. yes, yes, because I want to make this as streamlined as possible. Um, you've come in at a very exciting time of the journal because getting this new website has been like a dream about six years in the making. We finally made it happen and you are an integral part of its um, new launch. But being an integral part of a new launch is um, kind of for the birds, you know, and that's not not a lot of fun, but uh, it's really, really worth it. So thank you for um, bearing with and uh, and being part of this great new experiment. So does anyone else have any questions? Just shout out at me. Hi, seriously, I have a question. Um, if you can hear me okay. Yes. Great. Um, you could be going to cover this um, in the future, but I was wondering what, so when these posts are created, is there a way to, is there an integration between um, WordPress and Hootsuite to schedule no. posts maybe in advance? There. I do not use an integration of WordPress and Hootsuite. Um, there is one. There is one between Mailchimp and Hootsuite, um, or or the um, various social media pieces, but I have not done that with WordPress. I've been playing around with it for my other um, project, but. Yeah, happy to help or, or talk with you about that. Just to, it's nice to automate. I, I like automating as much as I possibly can. Um, mm -hmm. And then maybe people have time and they want to create some posts in advance or, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. nice to schedule it. Um, yes, yes. And um, one of the things I also do want to show is that you can schedule these in advance. I meant to show that. Thank you very much for bringing that up. You'll see here, when you go into quick edit, you can change the date that this appears. So suddenly um, the Admiral posted this in June and not May. 
You can also backdate, that's kind of weird, but um, you know, I'm gonna show you in just a few moments, like the schedule um, for each of you in terms of posting your content. But um, yeah, so thanks very much. Let's talk about that, Rachel. Um, I would, I think that would be nice to have a bit of an integration. Um, and then I can also talk to the web developer. We host, um, we host in a HIPAA compliant environment. It's very secure. Um, they are sometimes a little weird about integrations. So um, with various things like Hootsuite, so um, we'll get them on board. <laughs> so. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to go over? Um, Cersei, so you said that everything went out. Um, I just was putting in the text that the email should have come from WordPress. So maybe people were thinking it should come from somewhere else, but all of the fellows should have received um, a log on, right? Is it just their name? Yes. It is. Um, it'll show it in there. It'll be. So let's have a look here really quickly. Go to the dashboard. You can find yourself back here. So what I did was I used um, basically like the name piece of folks's email address to create their username. So um, here's the tools. Um, this is your username, you cannot change it. And then there's your email. Now, you should have received, hello? Okay, um, so you should have received an email with um, notifying you that you have user credentials for this WordPress site. Um, you can add your profile. I've never seen anybody add a profile photo. Um, and they'll, you'll come to it and you'll change your password. Um, Cersei, um, so many people are saying they didn't receive it, but I can obviously tell, like you're showing us in the system that their names are there. Can we just mm -hmm. call out the names that we actually see in the system? Yes, yes. Because it's because, for instance, when Cersei sent me my access, it literally was just my first name. So if we, I think if we go through what you have here, then mm -hmm. your username will be exactly what Cersei's put in the system. So it might be as simple as um, Penny or Elizana or whatever. So we'll yeah. just do that right now. So the other thing is check your spam. And um, because this is, this is coming from like a, a kind of a weird place. So sometimes your email system might freak out a little bit and it might be coming from like a weird email address. So I have Allison in here. I have, um, I have Anakit Raj, Arankit Raj. Um, it, it's, these are just like short pieces. There's the Wassies. There's Alexandra. Um, obviously this um, shortened her name. There's um, Echo, there's the tool, Candice. Um, yeah. So if you, if, you know, if you think about your email address, C Lion 4, um, E Joseph, Elizana, there's Ellen's, Hannah. Um, I shortened this to Joanna.bb. <laughs> So you wouldn't be typing out your entire last name. Um, someone's email address was, um, this is Lindsay Rosenfalls, it's L-E-R. Um, this is Jackie's. This is um, my songs. It's just M2 from her email address. This is Naomi's. And then this is Randabin's. It continues on to page two. 
Seriously, is it possible for, I know this is, this might be a lot of work to resend it. Some people are saying that it's not in their spam or anywhere. Yeah, sure. I can resend them. I can resend them. Yeah. And I'll also, um, I might, what I might have to do is just create like a little, a little spreadsheet of everything um, and just send them out via regular email individually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. If you did not get it, I'm, I'm very sorry. It's just the, the vagaries of, of this type of work. So, so everyone is back here. They do have a username and password. So I have made everyone administrators. I'm going, um, please, uh, if you could um, limit yourself to just working on your blogs um, if you would like to do other things on the website, that is certainly um, doable and you are welcome to do it. I just need to know that you're doing it. Um, so. Okay. So just one question for those of us who are able to sign in. Um, so when I am on the dashboard and I can see like the list of posts, mm -hmm. um, if I'm trying to kind of like create my first blog, I tried looking at templates and it seems like, where should I be duplicating to get my first blog? Okay. Ellen, Ellen, first share your screen. I think that'll be helpful. Is that okay, Cersei, if she does that? Yes, of course. All right. Can you all see this? I can. Okay. I can, yeah. So, um, I think I tried creating something, but I'm not sure that I did that correctly. Um, yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think, go ahead and open that up and have a look at it. So I think this is just like a generic Elementor. Yeah. We, um, so I'll maybe go ahead and trash that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. So, um, as when I was talking and, and explaining this to folks, I realized that probably the best thing to do would be to create that first template blog for everyone. Um, I was just going to have it to be a neutral one and folks could um, replicate it and then start working on it. But because this is such a big leap into the beyond, I think I'm just going to give everyone their first blog template that they can go in and manipulate. So is so, that this right here um, under templates? No, don't go in there. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I, that's a, that's, that's a little, I don't want to say that you're not advanced. I'm just saying that's like kind of, Oh, I'm not. So, <laughs> okay. So let me just, Please, everyone, don't go into the template section. It's it's a it's very powerful, and bad and interesting things might happen. So um, so yeah, not bad, just weird. Just let's just stay out of there. What you're going to do is you see where it says the Admiral Two and the Admiral One. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to create one of these for everyone. And so it will have your name, Ellen. Oh, okay. Yeah, the cat's name is the Admiral. It's kind of weird. Um, so it'll be Ellen and then your last name is Kazandine. Kazandine, um, yeah. Kazan. oh, there you are. Um, it's going to have your name. It'll have number one, because it's your first blog. And then um, it's going to say name of blog, because I don't know what the name of your blog is. So, um, and a quick question is on that. Um, for the name of the blog here, is that like the overarching name of our blog or the name of the individual post? Name of the individual post. Okay. So, um, excuse me. <laughs> yes, it's time to howl in the afternoon. Um, not me, the, the cat. This, yes, so name of blog here, I should, I should emphasize, is the name of your individual piece, not the overarching name of your blog. 
If you scroll down, you see where it says like Rashira Dobson home. Mm -hmm. And all these, these pages oh. are going to be the home post for your page. Right now, it, it's, um, they're being cleaned up. So um, they're going to be reflective of, of everyone's um, information. But um, those are the home pages for each of each of the fellows. And then these, where it says the Admiral number one, name a blog, those are the actual elements that you have, are creating for each of your blog, blogs every two weeks. Okay. So in terms of like creating our first one, we should just wait for an email from you saying that we've like had our first template created. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I was, yeah. I just think that because it, this is such a heavy lift right now, I just think that um, I think we could all use a little, use as much templating help as possible. I don't want to leave you floating out there. Um, yeah. So, and thank you for being brave and sharing your screen and um, showing things that yeah, I want to avoid void for folks, which is, um, you know, trying to create things for the template section. And I'm going to look, there is a lot in the chat. So let me see if, um, did anyone ask any questions in the chat that they would like to ask? Um, oh, I see Studi asked something about regarding any images for our blogs. We are allowed to take images from other sources as long as we credit them, right? I think that really depends on the image. You know, if you grab like a uh, an image of uh, of COVID, you know, for the coronavirus, I I guess you could, you know, if you provide a little a little like I got it from AP Associated Press, you know, that that's fine. If it's someone's personal image or something or their visage and you don't have like a photo release form that's a little that's a little different now if it's a celebrity or something i mean like they're kind of that's that's different but um yeah i think it's a matter of just you know using your best judgment i mean that's like why also why candace and i are like reviewing folks's blogs where we make them live on hbhr.org um, does that answer the question, Studi? If you want it to come to it, if you want your username and password for WordPress to go to a different email, that is perfectly fine. Just send me the email. I just use the one that was in the system. Hi, Cersei. I am not quite sure what happens after we've uplo uploaded our blogs. Do they go directly to you or Candice for review? And, and how do we get the feedback uh, before it's public? Okay, so um, that's a very good question. So once you put the, um, once you put your blog online, and you do that second step where you make it private, um, Candace and I will just be going, you know, you can let us know that it's there. Um, or most likely Candace and I will be going into the back end of the website regularly to, and we can see, um, because the posts are kind of reversed order in terms of, you know, the latest one appears at the top, we can see the latest um, pieces in there and look at them and then send you feedback as needed. We expect that most folks are going to be, you know, all but fine to go forward um, with their pieces. Yeah, and I think the additional step is that so Cersei and I will then once we've, you know, uh, looked at it, given you guys feedback, then we will then make it public. Yeah. Yeah, that, thank you, thank you, yes. And will all of that kind of like feedback process just be over email? Yeah, it can, it can be over email, you know, especially for, 
right now. Yes. Um, my question about the social media posts that we create to advertise each individual blog post. Should we be like, like, um, like doing that ahead of when we think it'll be made public or at yes. regular intervals? That's actually a really good question. That's the second part of this discussion. I'm going to walk everyone through how that's done. Uh, but just in terms of the timing, if you both are the ones making the post public, thus determining when it's released, um, should we coordinate so we know when the social media post should go out if we want it to come out before the no, blog post? The, um, so your blog posts and your social media are um, each and each of the fellows is assigned a day and time when all of their material is to be released. So when gotcha. you put your blog on the website, you're going to set it to um, like the day and time that you're releasing content, you know? So if you are signed Mondays at 2 p.m. Um, and I'm like, let's say June 3rd is the Monday, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but so, June 3rd at 2 p.m. is when that first blog is going to come out. And that's when all of the social media is coming out as well. And when I talk, say social media, that's our social media, the, um, the Harvard Public Health Review, because uh, each of the fellows will be responsible for creating their own pieces that go th out through our platforms. If you would like to send something out through your own platforms a little bit earlier, um, just to tell your readers that it's coming, um, that's that's something a little a little different. So. Were there any other questions? Um, going off Hannah's question in the chat about the reference styles, mm -hmm. would it be possible to have an example in the template of like how you'd like us to cite things? So whether it's like more of like a, you know, an inline text or a footnote or links or, you know, just mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yes, yes. And um, I also provided a link um, to a style guide in the document that I sent out. And um, I'll also do what you said, I'll provide like a little sample, some sample ways of, of doing that. Because it is a blog, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be quite as, as academic, you know, that's why we have blogs. Um, so linking is a good way of um, doing that. Um, but if you need, if you want to do um, more academic style, I'll put that sample in. Cersei, so I was also thinking um, because everyone's blogs are going to be rather dynamic that we might be more accepting of hyperlinks. Um, yeah. yeah. So as opposed to like necessarily, I mean, because I mean, we use APA for the regular journal mm -hmm. manuscripts, but I mean, I think given the fact that your blogs are going to be very timely, I think hyperlinks would make sense and might not, may, might be easier for people to do. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, would folks be okay if we moved forward? I realize like this has gone on a little long. Um, would folks be okay with moving forward with the promotions process? Yes. I'm ready. You're ready. All right. All right. So, so let's pretend um, we've we've had our first blog and it's it was just awesome and. Um, got that online and now we're ready to promote it. So um, there is a way of getting the word out. So part of the um, fellows program and um, one of the things that really, uh, really is dynamic is not only did we want to give everyone a place where they could share their work like through the website and the like, but also we wanted to provide um, training on the promotions process that sort of um, can really help your um, extend the reach um, of your pieces. So to do that, 
we're going to go through um, a bit of a process. So I'm just going to show you the worksheet really quickly. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create your artwork. And that um, the easiest way to do that is with Canva. And uh, I'm going to show this all to you in just a moment, but I wanted to walk you through it first. And in Canva, you can create um, promotions for all six of our um, social media platforms. We have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then we also have YouTube and we have TikTok. You'll see here that um, I provided a lot of information about how we do our visuals and the like in Canva. And at the bottom of this page, there is an alternative to Canva that we do not use as often. It's called Banner Snack. And um, it's a platform that I've used in the past. It creates, um, it creates social media pieces all at the same time that you can push out to different networks. Once you are done creating your social media pieces, you are going to then promote them. Now we have several different ways that we do this. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. You're not gonna go to all four of those platforms and upload your pieces individually. That would be a recipe for just, you know, never wanting to write a blog again. What we use is an aggregator tool that you may have heard of and that Rachel was talking about earlier called Hootsuite. You're gonna log into Hootsuite and I'm gonna show you this as well. You're going to um, go to something called the publisher and you're going to put in your post and you're going to do that four times, once for Facebook, once for LinkedIn, once for um, Twitter, and again for Instagram. And I have provided in this document templates of how to do posts for each of those. If you create a video, you are then going to upload that video to YouTube. You do not log in to YouTube and upload the video. You log in to the Harvard PHR Gmail account and you opt to go to YouTube from that email account. And I provided the um, credentials for that. We have a business class version of TikTok. You're going to log into TikTok using these credentials and you're going to upload using the template that I provided. I am going to say this, TikTok is incredibly easy to use. It is also very easy to mess up. So when you prepare your promotions for TikTok, make sure it's what you want before you hit okay. You cannot go back and do any editing. It is an incredible pain. I also am unsure what makes one video get 60 views and one video get five. I dare say that the people at TikTok do not know either. Another thing that I've just listed here and you do not need to worry about is something called MailChimp. Now, when you do a promotions process with the six platforms that I talked about here, normally what it's going to start with is an email. So if you've seen the emails for like volumes 26, 25 and 26, you'll see that it had links to all the articles and it also had kind of teased about some of the social media and the like, and it sort of pushed out from there. And then each of the social media pieces that came from that email sort of um, quoted or uh, paraphrased the actual email. So, um, you know, this idea of starting with something large that appeared on the website was 
shrunk down for an email and then shrunk down further for each and every sort of social media piece and all of those pieces driving you back to the website and the email. So kind of this cyclical um, sort of friction and um, engagement to sort of like a further the reach of your pieces. Now, let's say you wanted to have um, access to Harvard Public Health Review's um, different social media pieces. I am not averse to that. I have provided um, access to each of these um, platforms that we use. If you would like to be an administrator for our Facebook page, you have to send me a link to your Facebook um, profile so that I can add you. You can't log into Facebook and, and get access. Um, Instagram, you log into Instagram and, you know, just as long as you don't do anything to anyone else's posts, you know. Um, LinkedIn, like Facebook, I need to make you an administrator. Um, and so that's kind of that in a nutshell. So what I want to do is go back to the beginning of that process. We're not gonna do um, MailChimp, I'll just show that to you very quickly, but let's go to Canva. Canva, um, I'm sure a lot of people have used Canva. It um, basically is this incredible platform that allows you to do some pretty sophisticated design work um, without having to know how to do design work. And even better, I have shared, I've created folders for each of the fellows, which contains um, templates for the different types of social media that we do. So first off, when you log into our, our Canva instance, you'll see that there's a ton of things on the back end with different names. You can go over here and look at all of our designs. This is all very, very confusing. So I wouldn't um, suggest doing that. What I suggest doing instead is go to all of our folders, go to the fellows folder, click on it, and then you'll see you have a folder assigned to you. So let's say I'm Cordella and I'm going to click on my folder. And I'm gonna find on the back end three different templates. The first template here to the right, you can see that it's, um, it's for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And the reason that I made, um, basically you probably also recognize that these were the original posts that I put online. Um, and I, it, they worked very well, so I thought it would be a good um, jump off point for your social media um, once you start creating your posts. Let's say you liked some elements from this and you wanted to use it. If you go to the very top, you can replicate it and then you can start manipulating things around. You can change things, very easy to do. Let's say you wanted to add your own photographs in here. You just go over to uploads, you upload your pictures by just doing this, because you're going to upload them from your device. And then suddenly they're going to be on the back end. So let's say for some reason you wanted this beaker, you've added in an image. Now I will say the one really annoying thing about Canva is it has this capability of when you add in a picture, it'll sometimes make it a background. Um, if that happens, don't worry, just keep a hold of it and then drag it out and um, 
it can escape. <laughs> so the other way you can get around it is once you have a picture where you want it, you can go up here and lock it. And then you can move things around and that picture will stay in place. The other thing is, is if you would like to change aspects of an element, you can play around with the effects. You can see I made pictures for this particular promotion. I made them black and white using um, the effects that are provided in here. The other um, really wonderful piece is that Canva can handle video. So before you upload your video to um, YouTube and you would like it to have the um, HBHR logo and the like on it, if you look here, here it is. So let's say, um, no offense to, to Heather, um, but let's say you don't, you want to change this video out. Um, Heather wants to put in a new video. You just click on it and erase it. You go over to upload, um, upload media. You can also drag and drop it into here. And you can easily, um, just easily add in a new video. Now, one of the things is, is this video is perfectly sized for YouTube itself. Um, these are actually videos you would add to um, Instagram, Facebook, or uh, LinkedIn, or Twitter. You would have to make this a little bit larger in order to fit the Instagram block. Um, you probably noticed that there were a few videos where I had to get a little creative because the video, if I did that with, let's say Sophia's video, I would have lost a lot of the content. So I did a background for hers that sort of mimicked the first sort of background image. Um, I had these sort of um, ribbons here. Um, I, that was the same with um, View Tools and the same with randomens. Um, I did this with screenshots as well um, and made this sort of, you know, uh, sort of scrapbook looking um, effect. Same thing here with YouTube. So let's say Cordella wants to upload a YouTube video. <clears throat> same routine here for that. Um, if you look at this first one here, you'll see that I've, her, um, this is Naomi, Naomi's image, her video did not quite fit the screen um, as well. I did a workaround where I added in her, um, her legend to the right of her image and her video. And that was for a few people. Other folks, it worked out well where I could just keep it um, across the bottom. If you are doing a video and you do not want to have your name in it for whatever reason, you can just do this. Um, you can just exit out. And then suddenly when you're watching this video, you just have the logo at the top. So it's very dynamic, very easy to use. The one thing that you need to watch out for when you download pieces from Canva with video or GIF, and I note this in the document as well, you're going to click here on this little arrow. It says MP4, that's very exciting. Be sure that you select the video that you want individually. Don't, don't select the multiple things because what it's going to do is, is it going to create a an entirely long video with three different pieces in it and you don't want that. So if I want Ryan here, 
Um, I'm just going to click on page five. I'm going to hit done and it's going to download it. And then I'll be able to add this very easily to YouTube. So um, same thing with TikTok, same process. Um, though with this um, template, I was able to um, very easily just add everyone's legend to the bottom. So am I losing folks? Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to keep moving forward. Are folks able to hear me? Yes, Cersei. Okay. So we have all our pieces. We're very excited. We're going to go in. I'm logged into Hootsuite. This looks absolutely bizarre on the back end, right? What do you do? So you're going to like have all your little pieces together and you're going to go over to Publisher. Let's say that um, this is from last, this is from this past week. So I'll just use this as an example. You technically can do this. So let's say, okay, so let's say BB um, had this and she was ready to start um, sharing this out. Technically, BB could do, um, she could share this all at the same time to LinkedIn and to Facebook and Twitter. However, I don't recommend doing that because um, it's not, it, some of these things like these ats, like at Harvard, at Harvard Chan SBH, those don't work on LinkedIn and Facebook quite the same way and can be, or, or even on Instagram. And it can also be, um, that's, that's very jarring. Though the artwork will remain the same. So what I recommend doing is you're going to upload one at a time. So let's say you wanted to, um, for whatever reason, you wanted to uh, tag APHA, you would just put an at sign and then APHA. You'll notice here all of the tags are added in. Very easy to do, just hashtag and, and add that in. This is too long, so we would just get rid of some, some words. Um, this is already here. If you hadn't uploaded your images just yet, you would go to select files to upload, click on it, and then bring it up. I don't know if you can see my pop-up. This is a video. Um, and that's, that's the beauty of working with Canva. You can download the same thing as a video. You can also download it as an image. Um, but this is quite, this looks really nice. So you can either post it now, but since we're planning and we're scheduling um, according to our guide, we're going to schedule for later. And um, let's say BB is on. Mondays at 9 a.m. Not 9 p.m. And then you're going to hit done. And then you're going to schedule. And see, this makes a this creates a really great um, thing to work from. If you go and look on Monday. Here's this um, thing that you've already created for Twitter for BB. 
you're going to go in over to the right and you're going to hit duplicate. You're going to X out of the Twitter feed and you're going to add in Instagram. Um, you're, I've already provided like a template for the way you can write um, in Instagram. You're allowed to post a lot more text in Instagram than you can on Twitter. Um, some people get quite, you know, like it's a scroll of, of text. I don't advise doing that, but um, you want to take advantage of, um, of that more dynamic sort of engagement you can have. You would have your, uh, your post here. And then let's say um, you were going to tag, um, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Instagram as Doc Searcy. You could, uh, you could tag me. <laughs> so um, very exciting. And uh, you could tag other folks as well and you have your hashtags. And here you are, you're ready to go. You can hit schedule. And there's your, your, your pose. And then you would just repeat for LinkedIn and Facebook. Now, let me show you, um, let me just show you Facebook. It's very similar to LinkedIn, but you probably notice that when, um, for the post for Facebook and LinkedIn, I was able to do something here. So for Facebook, you're just going to scroll down. This is from an older thing. Don't, don't click on that. It's not even active. So we've selected Facebook. So let's say we're going to say that um, I don't know why BB is talking about herself in third person, but she is. So BB um, loves to go to um, uh, Bloomberg School of Public Health. And I don't know why she's visiting there, but she is in this instance. This it makes your post much more powerful than just having text on Facebook. Um, so wherever you can make a hashtag um, or um, at something. Am I do it. It makes it really does enhance your post. Um, this is something that you can do in Facebook and in LinkedIn. However, you can't do Facebook and LinkedIn at the same time, um, though it, technically you can make it work because the, po the, um, the ads and the hashtags that work on one don't necessarily work on the other. And um, if you do that and it doesn't work, then you will have something be added and, um, and in highlighted on Facebook, but just be like a string of weird text on LinkedIn. So you just want to avoid that. So once you have your four done here, then you're ready to go into YouTube. And as I said, you do not go to, um, YouTube directly to log in, you're going to want to go in through Harbor Public Health Reviews. Um, you're going to log into the email account. Um, please don't send emails out from it. I don't know why anybody would. It's not a very exciting email account. You'll see, you'll just hit on this little battery of apps at the top. You click on YouTube and lo and behold, you're going to be into our account. To get to our account, you're going to go over here. I suggest going in through your videos because it takes you straight to the back end of the site.
It's thinking about it. And um, so here we go. I'm sure folks have created or uploaded videos before. Just upload your video here. Um, it's going to create. You're going to upload your video. So make sure it's the title that you want it to be. Um, you can come back and take care of this thing with the description. It's going to bring up some thumbnails. Be sure that you review the thumbnails um, because people can close their eyes. They can have their mouth open weird if it's like a talking head in particular. If none of the thumbnails that show up work, you can upload an image. You can like take a... I suggest like taking the screenshot of just the video, like where you want it to show, and then you can upload it and that works well. For your videos, you're going to want to add them to the HBHR Fellows dropdown. It's not gonna let me show it. Oh, it did, um, because Zoom makes things very slow. You're just going to select it and um, you're gonna hit done. And then you just hit next. And, you know, ideally we could add subtitles. YouTube's subtitles, its auto subtitles have gotten much better than they were uh, even like a year ago. Um, if you have uh, subtitles, like official ones that you would like to add, I can show you how to do that. Most of the time, by the point time you're uploading a video um, to this section, you're going to want to make it public. Um, if you're unsure, just set it to private and um, I can go back in later and make it public. Please don't do the schedule um, thing with that. Uh, I'd rather just have it private. Um, and don't do anything with premieres. It, it gets a little weird. And then you would just hit save and you're ready to go. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, my gosh, TikTok. Um, I know it's gonna have use value someday. I just, I'm waiting for the someday. Um, but here's all of our videos. If you, when you log into TikTok, you'll see that some have been watched a lot. Some have not been watched really at all. I cannot explain what that is. And I read about it and folks are quite confused. I provided a template for all the keywords and the like that you would use. You have very, very little space to do anything um, extraordinary with TikTok in terms of uh, text. You just hit upload. We have a business version of this, um, which allows us to schedule uploads. Um, you would just click on that and then you could schedule it for the day and time that we have it. Um, when you upload your TikTok video, if you see this here where it says cover, you're just gonna be able to drag along and find the best thumbnail area. Um, and then this is like where you just add in the text. These are um, people who are users and Heather is on, um, Heather's on TikTok, so, and she follows us, thank you. And then this is like how you would put in your um, hashtags. So, hashtag cats. And oh my gosh, if people are, do that. So um, that's that. And then the last thing I just will show you really quickly. I can't imagine that anyone in the fellows would be doing anything with um, MailChimp. This is how we send out 
our um, messages to folks on mass we have about 24,000 people right one was 25 now um, in the system if you would like to add folks to our um, listserv you are welcome to do that you can add them yourself if you log in all you do is go over here to audience you can add them individually as subscribers you just add their email address and um, i very rarely do anything with personalization of names and stuff so if you just have the email address make sure that you select that the person gave you permission and then you can subscribe them if you have a larger number of folks who would like to be uploaded into the system, let me know and I will take care of that for you. And um, we can make sure that everyone gets messages about your blogs coming out. Um, we plan on doing probably a message about the fellows blogs um, once, every, once every two weeks. So um, folks can stay abreast of what's happening. So that is, a very uh, new <laughs> deep dive um, aspect, de uh, description of everything that we do to post a con post content and then push it, push it out and bring folks back to it. So thank you for bearing with that. Very detailed, long description. So. And I'm recording this, it's going to go on, on, on YouTube for folks to have. Are there any questions? I'll just kind of pop in um, since I know people will be watching this and also we, we wanted all of our editors to watch this as well. So for all the editors who wanted um, more training in terms of promotions, everything is here for you as well. So obviously this is specifically designed for fellows, but many of it um, works for um, how we promote our manuscripts um, as well. Um, I've tried to make this as streamlined and easy as possible. It's a lot, but um, it is it's not rocket science or anything it's just a it's a little time consuming at first but you'll get used to it is there any questions there was just one in the chat that <clears throat> i was answering um elizana was wondering if fellows had personal Canva accounts that they could be added to the APR Canva team. And my mm -hmm. initial impression, which might be different than yours, Cersei, was since you went ahead and created all those templates, um, that it might just be better to do everything through HPHR, but I, I don't know about linking the HPHR Canva site with other sites, so. Um, I We have a professional we have like the professional version of Canva because um, there's like a free version and then the, the sort of nuclear version. Um, if I add people to the team, it, it, there's like a cost associated with that. However, I can share your folder with you. So um, I think that would allow you to work from your, um, your instance of Canva and have access to and have access to those templates that I created. I hope that sounds good. I have a feeling I kind of work, <laughs> I wore people out. It, it's because it's a lot, it's like a tsunami of information. Um, And I appreciate your patience, Candace. I, I don't with if there's no like um, pressing questions, maybe we could move on and I'll I'll stop talking. I was gonna say that's why we called it the boot camp because boot camp is like that. <laughs> yes. Um, so 
yeah, I feel like I made everyone climb, you know, like in boot camp where they make people climb that big fence and then they have to climb back down on the other side. <laughs> it's just, it's like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. So let me see, I'm trying to open up the chat. Were there any questions in the chat? Are any hands raised? I'm gonna try and look. I don't think so. Um, well, thank you for listening to that. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And if you have any, please don't feel like you're alone as you start adding content to the website and to the social media. That's not the idea at all. Um, please let me know if you need, you know, a, a little cheering section as you get going. Let me, I'll, I'll gladly help out. And, and so will Candace. So. Absolutely. And, and I will also encourage, um, you know, that's why we have WhatsApps and, and LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you know, so if there's some people who get on there and, you know, tend to be doing well with flying colors, we'd appreciate it if everybody um, helps each other out um, as well. That's why we've tried to link people up in, in different ways. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to stop talking, Candace, so you can go over. No problem. The last of Um, I, I mean, I know I'm, I'm, I can't assume that the, the few people who are left standing two hours later necessarily want to continue. So I will give you guys that option if you need to drop off. Um, however, the next part will be talking about Scholastica. Um, and so though, for those fellows who have indicated that they're interested in becoming associate, associate or managing editors, uh, this will be very relevant to you those who are here and those who are also um, listening. Um, and this is also something that we wanted all of our editors on the editorial board to watch because we'll be introducing some new things, um, some new processes that we uh, will be putting in place as well, just as a refresher, uh, because we know sometimes people take a step back um, or don't quite know all of the pieces. So we're hoping to go through as much of those as possible. Um, before I share my screen, Cersei, um, the processing dashboard, do you mind just dropping that in that one and the, the Google Drive in the chat for me? Because I want to like just literally bump from like Scholastica to the dashboard to the drive. So like it just is seamless. Are you talking about the PowerPoint presentation dashboard? No, I'm just talking about the actual link to the, the um, URL. Oh, for Scholastica here. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Google URL for the dashboard. Oh, the, 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 well, the, the there's so many dashboards, Candace, I'm sorry. Yeah, no <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll put that right in the chat, yes. Yes. All right, everyone. Um, some of you may actually have watched the YouTube video um, where I discuss kind of getting started with Scholastica. So some of that will be similar. Um, however, we're gonna go through from start to finish from the moment the manuscript comes into Scholastica um, to how it actually ends up getting published on the website. Cersei has talked about um, obviously like bumping around the website, uh, you know, so we won't do that process. But the point is that um, a manuscript will come into Scholastica, um, obviously it will be reviewed um, and edited. Um, and then if it's if we make a decision to publish, there's a few additional steps that it needs to go to for it to go from Scholastica to the actual website. So I'll go ahead and log on. And Cersei, if you could um, just man the chat uh, for me. Sure. I won't be able to see that. So logging on to Scholastica, uh, the first thing that people should see um, is this kind of general landing page. Um, and if you go to my journals, unless you guys have multiple journals you're associated with with Scholastica, you should usually just have the Harvard Public Health Review. And you'll notice that you have your own little dashboard um, along with the activity of the actual journal. So that gives you a sense of like 
um, everything that editors are doing, um, authors are doing, um, everything within that. And then also you have, you can set up your to-do list here. And then any manuscripts that you've assigned yourself to would be here. But as a brand new editor, you might not have that. Um, just a few things um, to keep in mind. If you happen to have um, been an author for things, then you would actually find the things that you've um, authored here under my manuscripts, okay? So those are, if you're an author and you actually put that into the system. However, if you're just an editor, you go to my journals and then under manuscripts for all the manuscripts that Harvard Public Health Review will be taking a look at. And in terms of how the setup is in Scholastica, we'll have authors here with the title. Um, assignment has to do with which editors um, are actually looking at that article. So for this one, this hasn't actually been uh, assigned to anybody. Um, and the way we've tended to, to go about this is that editors can self-select. So if I wanted to pick up this article, I would just click here and Scholastica would show in green that I've successfully attached myself to that. Um, so that's usually kind of how we do it, but you'll see that most editors' names are already here, and there might be some other things that you guys be, might be wondering about. Some other uh, things we've put in, such as published online, that will let you know that the article has been published. Leave it alone. If it's been rejected, rejected, which just means rejected. Um, and then we have this revise and resubmit uh, button, which I'm not sure if we're going to keep or not, but just kind of so you guys have a sense of what that is. Um, those are just kind of ways that the managing editing team um, can peruse documents and, and have a better way of streamlining uh, the process. You also see when documents um, have come in and they've been officially submitted. Uh, so one thing that the managing editing team uh, will be keeping an eye on this because we want to provide the best service we can to our authors um, and not have things that are submitted um, over two weeks without um, any given author. I just unassigned myself from that, just kind of so you guys could see. I uh, will have status um, of an article. You can also kind of sort this however you want in terms of accepted, uh, that's under review, et cetera. And then you can sort it a couple of ways. Um, there are no stars on, on these, but these manuscripts here, you know, depending on if reviewers have given them stars, they might have anywhere from one to five stars. And then authors do have the ability to expedite um, manuscripts as well. Uh, so that's kind of where that is. And then we have another sorting section here. We wanna show all the manuscripts under review, all the manuscripts that have been accepted, and you can see which ones are published here, which ones are inactive, and usually inactive can be in one or two things. They can be inactive because they've officially been rejected or they also could be inactive if um, they're in the process of being revised by the author. You can also see, if you wanted to see all the manuscripts assigned to yourself, this is what I usually do if I wanna keep a, an eye on all of my manuscripts. Um, and you can also see kind of what other people are doing as well at any given time. And then another review status section, reviewing if there's been one review for a manuscript, we can see those versus if there are two reviews, three. So just as a general principle, we want all manuscripts to go through the, the peer review process. That's why we, we, we pay the big bucks for Scholastica, or at least Harvard Chan pays the big bucks now to have Scholastica um, for yeah, the... Yeah. Yeah, for these things to be reviewed. And so just as a standard process, we want things to be reviewed at the minimum of two times. As an editor, you have the ability to review a manuscript if you'd like. Um, and that means formally creating a review in the system. Um, you can also just have it reviewed by two entirely new people. Um, and I hope that makes sense to people. As the editor, you may read it, but if you don't make a formal review in the system, then that does not count as um, you having officially reviewed it, if that makes sense. So let's just kind of go in here, a sample manuscript to get a sense of what we're doing here. Um, so manuscript details will have things about the author, other authors that may be there, the abstract keywords, and then files as well. I'll have Alexandra and um, Mary Ellen and, and the managing editing team talk more about revise and resubmit later, but just kind of so you guys get a sense of what we're doing here. Um, so this is kind of like a key place you can go and to read a manuscript, you would go here. And there are different ways you can download it. You can read it actually in your browser. You can download it as a PDF or as just a Word document. 
if you'd like to do that, um, to officially write a review as an editor. As I said, you have the ability to do that. Um, you would click here and we have a template for that. And you simply fill out the template provided to you. It's the same review template that is sent out to reviewers and you rate it. You decide to recommend it as accept, revise and resubmit or reject. And then you can make, if you're the editor doing a review, then no comments for the editor, obviously. Um, you can rate it. And then there are a number of things that we talk about or we look at in terms of importance and timeliness, its appropriateness for the journal, clarity and coherence, um, its evidence base, its um, accuracy, language flow, and then implications for health uh, policy and practice. And then anything that they can do to strengthen the article. Um, one thing, I'm just going to give a shout out to some of our, um, our best reviewers. Um, our best reviewers, you don't necessarily have to write, you know, like five sentences for each. Um, I think, you know, um, one to two is sufficient as long as it's, it's constructive. I think that's the best thing. And then some of our best um, reviewers also include sample um, articles that an author may want to consider um, when, if they feel the need to revise that particular manuscript. So I can go back to the manuscript. Once I do, I, once I do that, I could save it. And that was on the, the right-hand side. Um, to invite reviewers, I can go here and invite my reviewers. So this already shows of which people have been uh, invited. Um, and so it can show like if you've accepted it um, versus if you've been invited and you're still waiting. One thing you will note, um, if you invite reviewers and say they haven't accepted within uh, a certain time period of two weeks or so, you can you have the ability to revoke that, uh, send a reminder email or submit a review on their behalf. But typically inviting reviewers, you click that button here. Um, and then we have several hundred people in the bank that we could go and we could do it kind of manually and click this way but we could also do it very specific to the manuscript. So this one is about human trafficking. Um, so I might click in and see maybe someone happens to have a specialty in human trafficking. I do that search there. Oh, and I have two people that popped up. This person was already invited, but this is kind of how you would do it and you could invite uh, here. Um, this doesn't show it here, but let me go ahead and go back. Maybe we can show. So uh, one thing you might wanna be very cautious of is if a manuscript is being reviewed, um, you'll have these little red tabs here. Um, so none of these people are reviewing and, and you'll notice that there's a number of people from um, law places and that's because they've been pulled into our system. Um, you might wanna just kind of get a sense of which of those people want to actually review for HPHR. Some want to and some do not. Uh, so just be aware of that. But if you want to look specifically for some public health people, um, you might have to click into a few tabs later. Um, so let's take, you know, this page, for example. So here you can see this person's already reviewing one manuscript. So if you have other people who don't have that read there, probably want to like, you know, invite someone new and, and not kind of overburden uh, someone who's already reviewing something. Um, expedite requests, this is the button you would click. Um, unless there's a reason to expedite it, we probably are not going to use this. Uh, the discussion tab is really important um, because in the discussion tab, um, if you create a new discussion right here, start a new discussion, you can talk to um, as other editors on the board. So say if you want to shoot um, Cersei, myself, or another editor a, a message, you can click on the names here and then type in subject, et cetera. And that sends a little email. You can attach something. If you want to talk to the author um, of the particular manuscript, their name is already selected there. And then you can also include editors on that message. And if you want to talk to a reviewer, then that's going to pull up as well. So you always have the option to talk to another editor or for another editor to be aware of what you're doing at any given time. Um, just to be aware, people, sometimes um, authors will resend you an email via this discussion tab. So this is where you see all of these three, seven, eight. So that might be multiple conversations that an editor is having with another editor or having with um, uh, an author or a reviewer. Okay, um, to do's, I don't see too many people doing this, but if there's something specific that you wanna remind yourself to do about a manuscript, you can 
create your own to-do list or you can put it in the sticky note. And then everything that's ever happened to this manuscript is going to be under activity uh, history. So if it's been in the system for a long time, you might wanna peruse this to get a sense of what's been going on with this particular manuscript. Up here at the top, uh, we have um, our reviewers. And one thing you can do um, is you can go in and look at the stats of a reviewer. So as I said, when you're looking at some of the, the law people and, and trying to decide, should I invite this person as a reviewer? You can always look at their stats to see how often are they invited? How often do they decline? What other things are they reviewing at any, any given time to get a sense of, oh, this is going to be a really good reviewer or like, mm, this reviewer might not be um, as good. And then you can see all of the tags um, that indicate their levels of expertise, and then how many um, things that they've been inv invited to review. Some other things that might be um, interesting to you, something that Shirsi and I keep a look, an eye on, is the analytics. So you can get a sense of how many days it takes for us to reject. Um, as well as our acceptance rate, it's 51%, but I know a couple months ago, I think it was at like 30% or so. So that obviously continues to fluctuate a little bit. And then editor analytics. Um, so we know anything and everything, you know, that editors are doing. So right now, gold star to Michael, he is reviewing seven uh, manuscripts. Um, and those people who um, are not highlighted or, you know, are just kind of in shaded means that they are no longer, they're not looking at any manuscripts um, at this time. So we, we always know um, who's very active uh, versus who's less active and you know what people are doing. And so for the managing editing team, this page might be another nice place to go to as well to get a, a quick sense of like who, which editors are the busiest uh, versus which editors are not. Um, and let's see, Cersei, did you pop those things in the chat? Yes, you did. Okay. Sure, yeah. I'll just pause for a second. Any questions before I pull up the next piece? You could be a sales rep for Scholastica. That was really clear. <laughs> this this is from being like intimately wrestling with this this platform for months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, let's see here. So a manuscript comes into Scholastica um, as the editor, um, you take it on, you um, either review it yourself and or push it out to at minimum to reviewers. Um, it then comes back to you, actually, I should probably go back to Scholastica now that I'm talking about this. Say for instance, um, as the editor, you decide, uh, you make a decision for a manuscript um, to, to be revised. So you make your decision here. Um, and as you guys will notice, we have templates here for um, those that we're accepting, but we need revisions, those that we're rejecting, those we're accepting entirely, and then some other things as well. So it's easy to just kind of pop this stuff in and then say I want to do accept revise and easily just kind of all this stuff pop pre-populates for you. And you can share immediately with the author um, or in a certain amount of time and any attachments that you want to have. Just so you're aware, all of the, um, let me just go ahead and uh, let's see to accept. So all of the comments made by reviewers will also be attached to this. So you'll make your decision, you'll write your note as the editor, but then all of that information will be included. Um, and then you'll be able to pre pre preview it and confirm it. I won't do that here because um, I'm not the official editor for that one. Um, so for this article, it's been reviewed. Um, there's been a decision for it to be um, revised. Um, I think this is the part where <laughs> Alexandra and Mary Ellen may want to come in in terms of um, the expectations that we will now have for authors to be able to revise. And I will stop sharing. If you guys would like to do it, if not, I'm, I'm happy to share as well. Just wanted to give you the opportunity if you wanted. 
turn it over sure. to Alexandra. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can briefly talk about that. Um, I can um, even potentially share my screen. Uh, so myself and the rest of the uh, managing um, editorial team, team one, are just um, in the process of um, just uh, revising and, and standardizing how um, you know associate editors should uh, go about um, addressing a revise and resubmit decision. Uh, so we've actually been, uh, the whole team's been working on making uh, several templates um, and uh, guides so that it can be, um, you know, highly standardized. So ideally, um, and this will all be communicated formally um, in an email to, you know, the whole um, ed editorial board um, team and um you know any uh, fellows who uh you know wish to join uh the board as associate or managing editors um will be you know um relay this communication as well um but you can see here this is um still somewhat of a of a rough it's almost finalized uh, draft for uh, revise and resubmit author guidelines so an associate editor um, and as uh, Candice mentioned, we're very we're very likely going to be removing that um, like all capitalized revise and resubmit editor on Scholastica. Um, so an associate editor is going to stay with the piece from that initial submission whenever they're self-assigned uh, through um, you know that finalized accepted version. So they're staying with the piece. Um, for, for throughout the entire process. And so let's say they they did send a decision to um, you know an author that the manuscript was either accepted, pending minor revisions, or they're requesting maybe major revisions. Um, once they would send that email, um, you know, using the templates that uh, Candace just showed you, they would also want to be attaching these um, more specific guidelines. So we're requiring that authors, um, the gist of it is that we're requiring that authors submit three things when they um, upload their uh, revised um, uh, version of, of the piece. So they need to submit um, a point by point response to each reviewer comment. And that can be done through the response template that we've included um which is very standard um and then uh also two versions of the revised article because the managing editorial team when we conducted a sort of independent audit of scholastica we noticed that auth authors were um sometimes but uh, certainly not always uh submitting uh you know two versions showing one the marked up changes based off of the reviewer feedback and then a clean unmarked version as well which can then later be used by production should that be uh the finalized version so it's very important that they submit uh both of these versions of the manuscript uh besides one basically having track changes and the other having you know uh, accepted all changes, they should be identical, but um, it's extremely important so that the associate editor can, you know, really um, uh, take the time, but in a very efficient way to go through the piece uh, and make sure um, that, you know, all of the um, hard work uh, done by the reviewers uh, have been addressed. Uh, so that's, um, one of the one of the ways that we're hopefully going to be standardizing that um, review process and making it a lot more um, efficient time wise for both our authors and our associate editors as well. So I'll just stop sharing my screen. Um, and we're also, as I say, we're going to be sending out, um, you know, these detailed guidelines in an email. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. And we're also planning on making an associate editor checklist. Uh, that can um, hopefully be helpful for both new and um, old associate editors, like veterans who've been with HPHR for years, and maybe some some newbies who are like me and who are more new to HPHR. Um, and that way, just everything is really standardized, um, and everyone you know knows what steps they need to take. Uh, Mary Ellen, did you have anything to add? That was excellent. I have nothing else to add. 
Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I, I concur. A uh, wonderful um, summary, Alexander. And, and I just want to say again, kudos to the managing editing team. Uh, we've worked many, many hours this yeah. past week <laughs> um, being able to figure out, you know, streamlining this process. Um, so and I, I saw many thumbs up from Penny. So super excited about about that. Yeah, that was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that lovely synopsis. My gosh. Thank you. And yeah, just um, everyone stay tuned. <laughs> awesome. Um, and so just kind of going back. So we, you know, Alexander just filled us in on what happens with the revise and resubmit. Um, so say for instance, all that's been done um, and an article, we've finally moved to that process of it being published. Um, just to kind of um, show you guys the process again, um, you know, for, um, for the, the revise and resubmit, um, everything like Alexander was talking about, all of the um, the marked up changes as well as the clean copy, we will have authors um, upload that here. Um, and I believe this is exactly what authors should be able to see. So their original manuscript will appear first and any additional manuscripts uh, will appear subsequently. Um, so this is where as an editor, you will be able to go back and say, okay, my author resub you know, submitted some um, a, a new version, I can go here and check that. Um, so everything is in a nice one place. Um, once you've done that as the uh, editor and you've said, okay, this article is good to go. Um, obviously you go back here again, you would um, make a decision. Oops, go back, go back again. Um, you'd make the decision to accept it. And then the, the little feature that I think may be new to some editors is once you've decided it needs, it's going to um, be accepted, is you would click here and say accepted to HPHR. And so that gives the managing editing team um, a sense that this article is ready to go. And so this is the mysterious piece that I think most editors don't really understand from how does a manuscript get from accepted, you know, we're going to publish it from Scholastica, which is not our publishing platform to our website. And so once you do that, the managing editing team says, okay, I know what's going on. This needs to be processed. So we then, the managing editing team will be going to the processing dashboard um, and I was not sharing, sorry guys. Can you see this now? Yes. Okay, perfect. I was like chatting away and then all of a sudden my screen said not sharing. I was like, that's not good. <laughs> um, so once a manuscript has been accepted, it's put, um, the title is put on the dashboard, the issue, which person on team two, because team two is the team that's re uh, responsible for making sure that's going to officially be uploaded to the website. And then in terms of its status, um, if it's ready in progress, et cetera, this is all specific to team two, so I won't go into that. So once it, it, it finds its way here um, so that we have an ongoing list of what's um, going to be published. And then finally, the managing editing team um, takes the article from Scholastica and it places it within the appropriate volume. Um, so if it's um, volume 41 or any of the other many volumes that we have coming out um, this month as well as the, this summer. Um, and then I won't show the website piece because that's what Cersei showed, but that's kind of all the steps that it goes through. A manuscript comes into Scholastica, all of that um, editing and reviewing happens. Um, and then um, it's accepted, it comes here to the dashboard, it also comes here to the drive, and then it is officially uploaded to our website and officially published. So hopefully that makes complete sense, you know, so people know kind of where some missing areas may have been. Um, any questions? Or anything I may not have said that might be obvious to some people, but you think might not be obvious to people who are listening in from home?
Okay. All right. Well, well, that is it. Um, I just will. The only thing I'll do is um, ask. I know there are some people, but I, I won't put anyone on the spot. But if there's anyone in this particular group here that is particularly interested in being a managing editor, um, could you raise your hand? Okay. And how about associate editor? Okay. Is Jackie, is that hand for managing? I'm open for both. Okay. So, um, so yeah, every, so if you're a managing editor, you, yeah, you still have the opportunity to be an associate editor. So just to describe the distinction, um, the associate editor, if that's all that you are, um, your only responsibility um, is to assign yourself to manuscripts um, and take them through that whole process that we just described. And then as a managing editor, you work with uh, Mary Ellen, Alexandra, um, and the rest of the managing editing team um, and that whole process. Um, do you, do you still have a sense of, of which one it might be, Jackie? Do you still? Because oh. what I, the reason I'm asking is I wanted to formally invite people. I know the managing editing team will be meeting, you know, next week. And so I just wanted to get a sense of who would want it to be on the invite for that. Yes. Okay. Um, Joanna? Uh, yeah, I'd like to be invited to that. Got it, got it. Mary Ellen, you're furiously taking notes, so I... <laughs> yes, and I was going to say, you know, come to the meeting. You don't, that's not necessarily that you're signing up, but come to the meeting, ask questions, learn more about it. Don't You don't have to feel as though coming to the meeting is a commitment. If you're not sure, if you have questions. Would you agree, Alexandra? Definitely, definitely. And and I, I want to echo Candice that, um, you know, if you're a managing editor, uh, you're definitely also an associate editor. So, you know, you are welcome and definitely encouraged to, to take on um, pieces that um, you feel you have expertise in and you want to assign yourself to that piece. That's, that's amazing. So I consider myself both an associate and managing editor. Um, so um, it's definitely not mutually exclusive. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Awesome. Well, I, I, I think we've boot camped, you know, enough. I don't know, Cersei, is anything you have left? <laughs> no, no, I, I have, um, I think, I, I think I've gone through as much as I can today and um, and you did a great, all of you did a great job walking through Scholastica. Um, so I think that we've, we've um, accomplished what we set out to do. I hope so. Awesome. Perfect. Um, and do you think the recording will be, you'll, you'll be able to post it probably later today, tonight? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty big. So um, awesome. it'll take a while to download. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you everyone. Um, so excited like we had such a large turnout and I know it was it was hard but for those of you who made it to the end thank you so much for those of you who watched it till the end thank you so much I think Candace, what I'll do is break it up a little bit <laughs> so. Candace can you post um I didn't I didn't realize there was a YouTube to watch about using Scholastica how do you find that yeah it's on I'll, our YouTube channel I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll send it to you right now mm -hmm. okay great yeah all right, see you all later. Bye-bye. Or I'll wait Thank for it. Thank you. Again. Yeah, you can wait a second. I'll I'll give it to sure. you. Right. So here's um this is a link to the YouTube channel as a whole. Okay. If you go to our YouTube channel, there is a playlist dedicated to HBHR editorial board recordings. And if you go on there, um there's get started. So this is going to be a there's one is on MailChimp, there's one on website review and how to use awesome. facebook and yeah yeah oh, great. I, dropped, I dropped the exact link for you oh yeah. awesome i'm gonna grab it so it's i i made this like a couple months ago and it's only like it's under 11 minutes but it was it's a quick and dirty not anything compared to what we did today okay that's great yeah. excellent awesome. i will watch it 
Okay. All right. Well, I guess we will see everyone later. Bye. Definitely. Thank you. Bye.